This is how you can make great rain particles in less than five minutes. Before we begin, feel free to follow along and just copy what I do. That's perfectly fine. But if you plan to continue using different particles for whatever project you're working on, I encourage you to pay attention and learn exactly what properties do and why it's effective for what you're creating. For this tutorial, I'll be assuming you have a generic understanding of Roblox Studio, for example, WASD to move around, and a little bit of understanding of the UI, but I'd like to make this as accessible as possible to new developers. And so without further ado, we're going to start with, in the Home tab, we're going to click on a part to add it to Workspace. We're going to head over to the Properties panel, which is uh, by default located in the bottom right. We're going to head over to Transform and set the size to 25 by 1 by 25. Up in the Appearance tab, we're going to set the transparency to 1. All the way down to the Part tab, set it to Anchored. And right above that in the Collision tab, Can Collide to False. We're going to go up in the Home tab and click Move and drag this up a little bit because we want our rain to be falling from the sky, not from the ground. Next, what we're going to want to do is either in the Viewport, which is everything you can see, you're going to want to right click on the part or in the Workspace tab over here, right click it and then click Insert Object and search for Particle Emitter. And there we go. The most important part, creating the particle emitter. Next, we're gonna set the emission direction to bottom, set the lifetime to one. This is in seconds, how long the particles will live. We're going to set the speed to 25 because rain falls faster than sparkles. And speaking of which, I'm only gonna be using the default Roblox particle image because not everyone is going to have the same resources that others may have. So next, we're gonna set the squash to three. This is how we're gonna make it look like rain. And right now it doesn't but it's gonna to start to when we set the size to 0.2. It's almost gonna look like raindrops now, but we're not there yet. What we're gonna do next is set the orientation to facing camera world up. Now, if we look down, it's gonna look like rain versus it being on facing camera where it just looks like falling lines, which of course we don't want. Next, we're gonna to go to color, double click on the color here, and then set it to a very light blue. We don't want it to be all the way up here, but we don't want it to be white necessarily. Then for the most important part is the transparency. This is going to give it that watery look. Now we could set a value to 0.5, which might look fine, but what we're going to do is go a step further. I'm going to set this back to zero. If you click and then click the three dots here, it's going to open up a panel where you can create a number sequence from the beginning to the end. You can set the value of the transparency. So we're going to create a dot at around 0.2 or the second line here and drag the first one all the way up. This way, the rain is gonna fade from invisible to visible very quickly, but also not instantly where it looks a little weird. We're gonna do the same thing when it fades out. And then that's just about it for the rain. There's a few more things we wanna do, such as setting the rate to a much higher value, such as we're just gonna go with 500. This might be excessive, especially for a little bit of rain, but we're just gonna go with this. Always feel free to do whatever you want for your own project. Then uh, you can see this rain, it looks a little bit too visible almost. So we're gonna head back into our transparency number sequence and drag these up to around 50%. This doesn't have to be exact. Now our rain's looking a little bit better. Next, we're, we're gonna wanna go up here and set light influence to zero. It's gonna look a little bit darker because the light from the sun will brighten it up. So if we set that to zero, the light will not affect the rain whatsoever. Next, we're gonna set the light emission to around 0.5, just to give it a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more visibility, but not the same as it was. And with this, our rain is just about done. The last thing we wanna do is set lock to part to true in the very bottom. This way, whenever we are moving this, the rain will follow with it rather than trailing behind. We want it to be locked apart and I'll explain why this is later. If you've just come for the particles, the video is over. Thank you for watching. However, I do want to give you guys a bonus and create a very simple script to make this hover over the player and look like realistic rain. So what we're going to do next is go over to starter player, right click starter player scripts and insert a local script. The first thing we're going to do is get the player. And before I begin, even if you know nothing about scripting, you can follow along and should get the same result as long as you're typing everything correctly. So what I'm going to do is create a variable for the player. A variable is stored data that you can tell the game this thing or this string of text equals this. So what we're going to do equals or what we're going to do is local player equals game dot players we're getting the players here and since this is a local script it's only running on your character in specific other players will not see anything that happens in this local script so game dot players dot local player after that local character 
equals player dot character. This is going to get your character, which is what you see in the game. You know, walking around all that, that's you, that's your character. Now, sometimes your character might not be loaded. You might be respawning or you might not even be fully in the game yet, but the script is started. So what we're gonna do is add or player dot character added colon wait. If the player character does not exist, it's going to wait until the game sends the signal that it does exist or that it was created. That way, there's going to be no errors in the future trying to use the player or trying to use the character. Sorry. Then what we're going to want to do is get the humanoid root part. That's the main piece of the player that we're going to pretty much anchor the water to or anchor the rain to. We're going to get the humanoid root part local Hume RP, which is my abbreviation that I use. Feel free to use whatever you want. Some people do HRP, which is completely fine. I do Hume RP. Equals character, colon, wait for child, humanoid root part. And make sure you spell it exactly how I do, because a lot of this stuff is very case sensitive. Then what we're gonna wanna do next is we're gonna wanna get our rain part, right? If we don't have that, what, is, what does all this matter? So we can't just have it here and just say, workspace.part. What we're gonna wanna do is at the very least, we're gonna name it. And the best thing to do would be to put it in replicated storage because this is out of the way of everything else. You're not gonna like stumble upon it in game and be like, why is it raining right over here? Or we're gonna, what we're generally gonna wanna do is have a lot of this in a bunch of folders, especially if you got tons of stuff in here. Say for example, you got like 50 different particle emitters. You're not gonna wanna have them all here and then it's, it's gonna be a mess is what I'm trying to say. We're gonna wanna have organization. Maybe we wanna have a folder called particles. And then maybe in that folder, we wanna have weather particles. And we're gonna stick our rain part right in there. And then in our local script, we can, what we can do is local rain part. Again, you, you can name this variable whatever you want. You could call it RP or rain P or something like that. I'm gonna go with rain part for simplicity equals game. We're just like, this is the game here. Game dot replicated storage, what we just parented it to, dot particles, dot weather, which is the folders we put it in, dot rain part. Then we're gonna wanna type colon clone. This is gonna create a copy so that if we were to do this again, it would still be there and we could take another one. Then what we're gonna wanna do is um, set the rain parts parent because we don't want it to just sit in here or sit without a parent because it's not gonna be there. We're gonna have to put it somewhere in workspace for it to actually exist or for people to see it. And what I generally do is have all of my VFX or particles or anything temporary in a folder called debris. You could just parent it to the player or workspace itself. That works fine, but I like to be a little bit more organized. So we're gonna set rainpart.parent to workspace.debris. Then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna get a service called run service. I abbreviate this to RS. RS equals game colon get service run service. We're gonna go back down to the bottom, local connection, which I've also abbreviated. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it blank here. And then we're gonna set what it is, a line further downward. Connection equals RS dot heartbeat colon connect function. Basically, this is a loop that will happen every single frame. So, you know, you got like 60 FPS or something, it's gonna happen 60 times per second. The reason we wanna add a variable to this is, for example, what we're gonna do is probably if character and character dot parent. We're, we're just checking if the character exists and all that. We're gonna add an else here. So maybe what if the character does not exist? Well then, what we're gonna do is connection colon disconnect. We don't want this to keep looping and doing all that when we don't want it to. Otherwise that could cause memory leaks and it's just a very minor optimization thing that it's just a good habit to get into. So what we're gonna do next is set where the rain part's going to be. So rain part dot C frame equals human root part dot C frame. We could just leave it at this and this would work. So why don't we go ahead and test that? Now we got our rain right above our head, though you might notice that it's like right over here. It's actually not above our head. The reason is because it's set to our humanoid root part C frame. What we need to do is tell it to be above our humanoid root part, not in the same place. So what we're gonna do is times C frame dot new, zero, 25, zero, and try that again. Immediately you'll notice there is actually rain now. And you'll also see that the rain doesn't really go down quite far enough. So what we can do, the easiest thing to do is gonna be to make this a little lower. So we're just gonna make this 20 or 20 studs up and that way it should go just about to the ground. There we go. And feel free to 
to mess with any of this stuff. It is all up to you as the creator of your own game. Though, um, one more problem we might have, sorry for going back and forth so many times, but if we move, the rain sort of follows us. And that's not really the problem. I think this looks kind of nice. It's a little inconsistent, but you know, that's fine. But when we turn, that's when you'll start to see an issue. As you can see, the rain is sort of rotating with our character. I'll select it to demonstrate. It's always facing where our character is facing. And that's not good because the rain is going to look really weird or look really fast. So what we're instead going to do is instead of all this, we're going to type cframe.new. We're going to create a whole new cframe. A cframe in a very basic form is a position and an orientation. What we're going to do is just not set the orientation because if it always stays the same orientation, we're not going to have that weird rotation effect. So what we're going to do is set it to humanoid root part dot position. And you might've noticed that we haven't told it to be above our player. Well, we're instead of doing times C frame dot new, which we still could do this zero twenty five zero. It's a little more efficient if we instead go in it back in these parentheses plus vector three dot new zero twenty five zero vector three i explained vector three rather poorly in the video so i'd like to clarify vector three is three numbers the x y and z axis and a c frame is just two of those meaning the position and orientation in two vector three values again you could just do times c frame dot new zero twenty five zero that would work too i like to do it like this it looks cleaner and we're going to go back into the game and as you can see when we turn our, or when we turn our character it's not turning it's going to stay the same way no matter what but it's always going to be following above us and we could also change how big this is like you could zoom out and see that there's not very much rain so maybe you'll make this 50 150 now there's more now you can see it further away but there's a lot less rain and that's kind of the problem when doing this because you might think oh why don't i just put it above the world and make it like let's just go 150 by 150 no, not 1500 sorry do it like that there's not very much rain but why don't i just add more particle emitters just add an absolute ton and now you could do this and it's gonna look nice but that's assuming that every single one of your players has a very powerful computer they're probably a lot of them are going to be on mobile they're not going to be able to run this very well now i have a pretty good computer so this isn't really affecting me much but that's a lot of particles and you don't want that many because that's going to cause a lot of lag and obviously we can't have it be this infrequent unless we just want a very light rain. But if we're going for a heavy rain, it's going to have to be more like this. And that's why we put it above the player. So that way, wherever they go, they'll always see the rain. And it's not just in one space. And feel free to adjust all this, like I've said. In its basic form, this doesn't do that much. All this is is basically the functionality for putting the rain part above your player. There's no conditions. Like, for example, what if you wanted to create a system for weather? What if you wanted rain? Randomly, there's a chance for rain to start. You'd have to go through the whole process of checking, is the rain gonna start now? And then if it is, then you're gonna do this. So in its basic form, this isn't very helpful. This is a demonstration of how to use this. And I think that's just about it for the tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more content just like this. And if you have any particles you'd like to see created, comment it down below and I'll pick one out to create in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Peace.